Shots rang out last night in this quiet Queens community. Gun violence rising in New York to disturbing levels. When are we going to come together to save these young lives? Growing up in New York wasn't easy. It was definitely a challenging environment. You know, going to school, seeing crack vials on the curb, you know, seeing people hustling. There's so many minefields that you have to try to navigate around, from gangs to, to drugs to guns. It was dog eat dog world out there. Either you tough or you gonna fold, and <laughs> we wasn't folding. Basketball served as an outlet for me. It was a therapy. I didn't have my mom, my dad, my brothers. This school, it was a, almost everything to me. Being in this building, practicing, I think that saved my life. Basketball at Cardozo, I think, does have a big part of protecting the kids from the streets, because I'd rather see a kid shoot a basketball than shoot a gun. Cardozo was always a, a very dominant program. He's had a lot of great players here. You know, the Royal Ivies, the Ray Falstons. It's a religion. You put out the uniform that says Cardozo judges. There's a lot of blood, tears, and sweat. Yo, I want you diving, not sliding. You know, you had a coach that really was passionate about his players. You're starting to look like Steph Curry, man. Coach Ron is definitely a father figure for a lot of guys. We call him the king of New York. He's a legend. Come on, you pineapple. He expects excellency. Total swish, total swish. He's not going to be your friend. He's going to be your mentor. Right hand on the right side. If you start to come here, then I readjust. Catch it, catch it, catch it. He puts all his effort, all his time into his kids. He doesn't give up on them. Denim, shoot it soft. A tough rim that don't go in. He always wants to make sure you're doing good, even when it has nothing to do with basketball. Everybody, unfortunately, doesn't have a strong father figure in their life. Having a, a coach like Ron Leclerio that, that cares for his kids, I think that there has saved a lot of lives. I don't have any biological sons but I have hundreds of adopted sons. The Cardozo basketball team is my family. wins in New York City public school history. Let's go! Let's go! Hang on, hang on, hang on! But it's the seven players I've lost to gun violence that keep me up at night. My mission is to teach my players that violence does not fix the problems. Something that I've learned from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent direct action uh, is, uh, is a most powerful approach. My dad, Dr. Amon Leclerio, saved his life when he got stabbed in Harlem, September 20th, 1958. He was stabbed in New York while autographing copies of his first book. I heard someone say, are you Reverend King? And I didn't hardly look up, I just said yes. And by that time, uh, she leaned over and stabbed me. And of course, it was a near fatal stabbing. My dad, rushes to Harlem Hospital, goes into the operating room. He sees the knife in his chest, touching his aorta. If Dr. King would have sneezed or coughed, he would have drowned in his own blood. My father removed two ribs from Dr. King's side, managed to get in and get the knife out. Saved Dr. King's life. Three and a half months later, my dad gets a beautiful letter from Dr. King thanking him. Dr. King inspired me when I was young because there would be phone calls that I overheard my dad speaking and it was to Dr. King. I remember one time the phone's ringing. 
I answer the phone. So they're yelling, who's on the phone? Who's on the phone? So I yell back, I'm not sure. Some guy says he's a king. When I met Dr. King, I was really, really young. Dr. King tapped me, said, Ronnie, <laughs> my name is King, but I'm not a king. We will continue the protest in the same spirit of love and nonviolence and passive resistance. The riot is the language of the unheard, and America has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened. The violence comes into being in this transition. Unborn generations will be the recipients of a long and desolate night of bitterness. And I saw all the things he was doing, and I realized, wow, no matter what happened, he was cool, calm, collected, never got violent. He fought with his mind. In the nonviolent movement, the end is to convert the opponent and to bring about a society where all men will live together as brothers and every man will respect the dignity and worth of human personality. The things that Dr. Martin Luther King showed the world, I want to show my kids. Coach Nicario always speak about Dr. King. When January comes around, you hear about Dr. King a lot. He talked about, you know, how Dr. King was was a humble man, you know, was a, was a righteous man, and he wanted to uplift and empower his people, and to use nonviolence was was his key. Coach Nicario, as, as far as guns and staying away, is definitely pick up a basketball. Like, when in doubt, just go to the park, go to the gym. Cotron and Dr. King's message is similar because they both stand for nonviolence and not to retaliate. Having those conversations in the right environment can change lives. I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night. I believe if my dad did not save Dr. Martin Luther King's life, history would be a lot different. The extra 10 years that Dr. King lived before he was assassinated, April 4th, 1968, Dr. King opened up so many doors. I'm the first black police commissioner of Suffolk County. I wouldn't have been able to be there if it wasn't for somebody like Dr. King that knocked down barriers. And I think Coach Nicario pushed his players, people like myself, to also knock down barriers as well. That's his drive. I need to get these kids to places that they don't think they can get to. And that was me. I've dedicated my life to this game and my players. I hope to have impacted them the same way as Dr. King impacted me.